Welcome everybody to the second week of February Advisor Ambassador Program. Uh, my name is Zach Hules. I'm out in the Falls Church office at NAFA National. And today we have a great speaker lined up for you. Her name is Elizabeth Valetti. She will be sharing her screen and her story. Uh, feel free to share your screen as well. Um, and uh, feel free to get involved in the chat box. There should be a chat box below uh, on your screen here in the Zoom window. And you can feel free to ask questions uh, during the program in the chat box. And that way at the end of the program, if, you, if the questions are, have not been answered, we can do a little Q&A. And uh, this session will be recorded and available for your viewing pleasure later. So Elizabeth, go ahead. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. We're going to cover building your professional network of mentors and industry colleagues. And I want you to know up front that I will be brief today. I've got a lot of great information and insight to share with you. And so we all stay focused and make this an effective use of our time. I'm only going to speak about 15 minutes today. I do believe that this is an important topic because as the saying goes, a rising tide lifts all ships. Whether you're just starting your career in financial services or you're an experienced veteran of the profession, this is a relationship business. When you're new, seeking out mentors and asking their advice, guidance, and being open to their ideas and coaching is how you grow and succeed. And when you're an experienced professional, sharing your wisdom about what works and doesn't work with those new to the business can be both rewarding and fulfilling. As we get started here, a little background about me. I was born and raised in Michigan, and my dad has been in the industry for 46 years. I never thought that I would get into this profession. I always had the idea of becoming an actress or something exciting like that. In 2006, after working in an unrelated field for about a year after college, I entered the financial services business and joined my dad's firm in Michigan. And my dad must have some pretty good persuasive skills because as you can see, not only, not, not only myself, but my two younger brothers also are financial advisors and joined our firm. After about four and a half years working in Michigan, I decided that I would move to San Antonio, Texas to open up a detached location of our Michigan-based firm. The only problem was I did not have any personal or professional network in San Antonio and I knew zero people. So today I'm gonna to share with you my experience, how I built my professional network over almost the last nine years in San Antonio, essentially starting an operation from scratch. These are some wonderful organizations to get involved with that usually have various committees, events, and conferences to participate in, and I've participated in all of these over the years. In 2010, when I first moved to San Antonio, I quickly joined NAFA and started going to the luncheon events. And after a few months, I was able to get on the board. I did the same for the FPA and built some lasting relationships. The beauty about all of these organizations is that the people involved with them, they truly believe in our industry. They want to continue to elevate our profession. They want to continue to create new leaders and they truly want to help. When exploring any organizations or associations to join, some good questions to ask when doing your research are, how many members do you have? How often do you meet and where? I found that if a group does not meet at least quarterly, it's very difficult to gain traction and build relationships with other people simply because you're not seeing them often enough. What committees would I be able to volunteer for? What are the other professions represented in the membership of the organization? Meaning, are there attorneys, CPAs, property and casualty agents that are also members? And then, of course, what are the membership dues? Probably the most important thing when you become an, involved in an association or organization is to do what you say you will do. This is crucial to your reputation in the association and also in the community. Following through on your commitments and gaining this credibility is something that is earned over time. This is also true with client relationships. 
people want someone who will follow through on commitments and do what they said that they would do. There's a great book that I had the opportunity to read called Credibility. And I read this when I took the Leadership and Life Institute curriculum several years ago through NAFA that delves into this further that I would recommend. I remember when I first moved to San Antonio and started joining various organizations and getting involved, while everybody was very nice and welcoming, I think there was a question mark in people's minds of, can I rely and depend on her? And over time, I had to show through my actions that I was serious about my commitment to the organization and that I followed through. In addition to joining organizations, the conferences that the company you're affiliated with hosts and also conferences that different organizations and associations put on are usually worth the investment of your time and money to attend. Volunteering at a conference can be a great way to meet a high number of people quickly. And to build your professional network of mentors, top industry colleagues, centers of influence, seek out the elite performers in our industry and ask to meet with them. You'll find that most of them are very willing to take a meeting and want to help. The quote that the man on top of the mountain didn't just fall there is very true. All of the top performers in our industry and in life in general are successful because in large part, they were willing to do the things that failures don't like to do. So ask questions and listen and learn about what they did to achieve their success. The script would go something like this. I'm a new member of NAFA or X organization, and I would enjoy meeting you, learning about your business success in our field, and share some ideas. I believe it never hurts to expand our network, and at the very least at the end of our meeting, we both will have made another professional connection. What day works best for you? The other thing I've found throughout the years is that while all of us are in financial services, we may or may not do all of the same things. There could be opportunities to partner with other members of the organization on services that you don't currently offer. These meetings with successful, accomplished mentors will build goodwill and respect for you. And then as a result, they will become advocates for you and your business. I know I've certainly found this to be true. Good questions to ask when meeting a potential mentor or center of influence is, how did you get your start in the profession? How long have you been a member of NAFA or X organization and what's been your experience? What are some other organizations or charities that you're involved in? And if I ran into a good prospect for your business, how would I know it and how would you like me to introduce them to you? This is a question that I learned from Bill Cates, the referral coach, and I think it's a key question to ask also in networking and in social situations. LinkedIn can be an extremely effective tool for building your professional network. We could do a whole session just on LinkedIn. Even if you don't have LinkedIn premium, you're still able to search for people based on industry, location, current or past company, et cetera. I know I've got the free version of LinkedIn and it works just fine. Here are a couple of template messages that you could use when sending connection requests. Hi Bob, I hope you're having a great week. I'd like to connect with you on LinkedIn. If you see anybody that I'm connected with that you'd like to be introduced to, I'd be happy to make that connection. Or I found that LinkedIn is a useful tool, especially when you have a good idea of what the other person does. Would you be open to getting together in the near future? An idea for building relationships with CPAs is what our firm calls bring a lunch to CPA day in April. Typically a day or two before tax day, we deliver lunch to the CPA and their staff to show them that we understand their commitment to their clients and to reward them for all of their effort. How this works is, we would reach out to one or two smaller CPA firms that we want to develop a relationship with and inform them that we'd like to deliver lunch to them and their staff. We ask the CPA how many staff members will be there on the day that we want to deliver it. We also ask about any dietary restrictions or if there are vegetarians. Then we, the order is placed 
at some place like Subway or Panera Bread for an assortment of sandwiches, chips, and cookies. The day that we deliver lunch, which is typically a day or two before tax day, I just drop off the lunch with my business card. I don't stay more than a couple minutes, and I say to the CPA that I will follow up with him or her after tax season to get together. This is more manageable with the smaller CPA firms and is appreciated each year. Hosting educational programs for your clients, chambers of commerce, and associations is a great way to provide value and also solidify your relationships with other professionals. This is a brochure that our firm developed for many of these programs um, that you'll see here. We also ask an, a CPA or an attorney to speak with us on a variety of topics. And sometimes that other professional will invite clients or their prospective clients. And so it's a great way for both of us to meet new people. We also believe in hosting client events and open houses at our office. And we invite our clients, centers of influence, industry colleagues, and then of course the other professionals we work with. There's typically no formal program. It's just a fun evening socializing and having everybody get to know each other. And here are a few samples of what, what we've done in the past that you can see on your screen. In 2013, I had the opportunity to take the Leadership in Life Institute curriculum, or Lilly, through NAFA. And this is a six-month leadership development course, and the mission of the course is to foster personal growth, enhance business practices, and then develop skills necessary for effective leadership. Lilly is one of the best professional experiences that I've had in my career this far and really enjoyed it. I think the opportunity to build relationships with other seasoned professionals across the state, hear their ideas, gain the knowledge from all of the great books included will help all advisors and agents take their practice to the next level. If you have an interest in learning more, you can visit the NAFA Lilly website there on the screen. Here are four books that have made a positive difference for me as I built my team in a city where I had no initial relationships. They are Becoming a Rainmaker by Matt Oxley, The Energy Bus by John Gordon, Credibility by Barry Posner, and How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, which is still very relevant to this day. I believe that all of the skills and knowledge that I learned in Lilly is one of the big reasons that over the last nine years, our firm has grown in San Antonio from just me to now the team that you see here. Seven of the people in this picture that you see, I met through personal introductions from industry colleagues. The things I've shared with you today, I've personally done, and the growth that our firm has seen is proof that these ideas, if applied, really do work. By getting involved in organizations, in the community, building relationships, staying in touch, following through on commitments, that will lead to success. I heard a statistic the other day that said, this, a sale is made typically between five and 12 touches but most people give up on a prospect after three touches. And I think building relationships with prospective clients and industry colleagues is no different. Really to gain traction in a particular market, we found and I found that it takes really 12 plus months to develop those relationships. And I can tell you that when I first moved to San Antonio for the first two and a half years after moving here, I worked seven days a week, typically between 10 to 12 hours a day, getting our business launched. There really is no substitute for hard work. Um, we went from producing virtually zero revenue in 2010 to now this year, we'll do about 2.3 million of GDC as a team. And I get to see my dad and my brothers every day, so that's special. 100% um, of our advisors are fiduciaries, and we place an emphasis on doing comprehensive financial planning for our clients. 
In the next five years, we envision doubling the size of our team here in San Antonio. Having the opportunity to participate various times in the legislative day at the state level and also at the congressional conference at the national level in Washington, D.C., really has taught me what advocacy means for our livelihoods and also our clients' well-being. Don't forget that the Congressional Conference is coming up this year, May 14th and 15th in Washington, D.C. The P Performance Plus Purpose Conference will be held in Orlando this year, September 11th through the 14th, so don't miss it. Really, everything we've talked about today is about paying it forward, being a resource in your community, and providing value before you receive anything back. I think this quote from Princess Diana sums it up perfectly. And with that, I hope that this has been helpful and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, does anybody have any questions for her for today? Feel free to unmute yourselves or share your video if you do. All right, and if not, then that would conclude our program.